Welcome to Citygate Church today. We're so glad you're joining us wherever you're tuning in from. Today's message was recorded at our live Sunday services. And we hope that it blesses you today. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength. Come on, we're going to get excited about the Word of God this morning. We're not just going to sit there and read it like it's the daily whatever mess. Amen. The daily lie. Let's, let's, should we call it that? I don't know. God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Can we say that? Therefore, we will not fear. Fear. Let's say it again. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, even though the world is shaken, even though the world doesn't know what to do, even though the markets are going bananas, even though interest rates are going up, even though, come on guys, if that's where we live our lives, we're living a very shallow Christian life. Can I just say it as it is? If those are the things which dictate our world and how we feel and how we live our lives, it's like the world falls apart, so we fall apart. It's time to get back on the Word of God. Can I hear an amen this morning? Okay. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah, think about that. There is a river. There is a river. In the middle of the turmoil, there is a river. In the middle of the world shaking, there is a river. In the middle of the mountains quaking, there is a river. Come on. In the middle of the world knowing not what to do, there is a river. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. There is a river whose streams shall make glad City Gate Church. There's a river. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. <laughs> the nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Come on, you've gone quiet on me, guys. It, it, you know what? If I was sitting in the congregation now, I'd be standing on my chair. But I know what I'm, where I'm going, so I'm a little bit of an advantage. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still. Be still. Look at somebody and say, be still. Stand to your feet, turn around and tell at least five people, be still. Come on, let's get up. Stand up, turn around, be still. Be still. You can sit down again. Be still. Isn't it interesting that us being still hasn't got anything to do with the world being at peace? Hello? We can be still in the middle of the mountains melting. 
We can be still in the middle of the seas roaring. We can be still in the middle of the mountains quaking and shaking. We can be still in the middle of the nations raging. We can be still in the middle of the wars that are going on. This is the context. You see, we take these verses out. We put them on our mantelpiece or as a screensaver. Be still. And we think, oh, for me to be still, I need to go and find a quiet place. But that's not what the Word of God says. It says, be still on the battlefield. Be still next to the mountain that's falling over. Be still in the middle of political turmoil. Be still. You don't have to go and find a quiet place. Your heart is a quiet place when the Holy Ghost is living on the inside. Be still and know that I am God. I could put every name of God in there. Be still and know that I'm your healer. Be still and know that I am your provider. Be still and know that I am your Prince of Peace. Be still and know that I am the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Be still and know that I am the Balm of Gilead. Be still and know that I am the Alpha and the Omega. Be still and know that I am El Elyon, the Lord Most High. Be still and know that I am Jehovah, the Lord your Shepherd, the Lord your Present, the Lord your Peace, the Lord your Righteousness, the Arm, the Captain of the Army. Be still and know in the middle of it, Whatever it is you need to know, be still and know that he is God in your life. I will be exalted above the nations. I will be exalted in the earth for the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Today I want to speak on the river of life. The river of life. God has always had a river. God's always had a river. There was a, when God created the earth and he created Eden, there was a garden east of Eden and there was a river in the garden. When God made things as they should be, he put a river right in the middle of the whole thing. And he made a comment on it. There was a river, (laughs) Genesis chapter 2. There there is a river from the very throne of God that flows out from the throne of God. There is a river. Psalm 65 says the river of God is full of water. Can I say it like this? The river of God is not a trickle, it's a flood. Cannot be contained. There is a river. There was Ezekiel. He waded in the river and then he swam in the river and everywhere the river went, it brought life. God says in Isaiah, a number of places, that he will do a new thing. A new thing. And what was the new thing from Isaiah? Rivers in the desert. See, when God moves, he starts a river. When God moves, he gets a flood going. When God moves, he doesn't just give a little pool. God releases a river. God's a God of rivers. Everything about God speaks about a river to me. He says, I will pour streams on dry ground and on thirsty ground. He says in Isaiah as well, I will open up rivers on bare mountains. When God comes to the earth in Psalm, spoken of in Psalm 65, he says he will cause the rivers to overflow. His river cannot be contained. It's a flood. It's a force. It's a driving force. It's a powerful source of life that has something in it that says, you can't contain me. You can't keep me nice and and straight. I'm not a canal. I'm a flood river. I'm not a little stream. I'm a bursting banks river. Rivers marked out the inheritance of God in the promised land. The Bible says that he will create Floods of water in the desert, fountains out of dry lands. You go to the book of uh, Jeremiah, he prophesied about a people and God said that you have forsaken me, the very fountain of life. 
God describes him himself as a fountain of living water. When you get around God, you're going to get wet. You can't stay dry in the presence of God. Because God is a fountain. God is a spring. God is a flood water. God is not just a fire. He's a fire and a flood. You're going to get wet. Have you ever been near a stream and been pushed in? I have been. Kids, we were on holiday the other year and I was doing a, a hello thing to the church. 2016, I think it was, and there was I being all, all sort of, hello, City Gate Church, and how's it going? And it was being shown on a Sunday morning, and from left field, my boys all ran at me and pushed me in the pool <laughs> while I was filming. I mean, my word. How disrespectful, dishonoring of their father. I think sometimes God wants to push us in the pool. You can go to Exodus and Deuteronomy and Leviticus and you can find where the people of God were thirsty and hungry and God said to Moses, go to the rock, take your staff of authority, speak to the rock and I will provide a river. Poured out refreshment on the people of God. You can go to the last book of the Bible <laughs> and there's, it's, it speaks of the Euphrates, the great river and it's the place of judgment where God moves to judge the earth. But God says he will extend peace and shalom to us like a river and he will extend glory to us like an overflowing stream. You can go to the New Testament and find the Jordan where Jesus himself in the river was baptized in water and in the river was baptized with the Holy Ghost. In a river. The Bible tells us that as believers we are planted and we bear fruit by the river. When you come to the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven, you find a flood river that's going straight down the middle of the main street. And in the middle of this and on either side is the tree of life, which brings healing to the nations right by the river. And creating fruitfulness like you've never seen before in the word of God. God's into rivers. The Christian life, apart from the river of God, is an apology of a Christian life. God wants us wet. He wants us like Ezekiel up to our ankles, but that's not good enough, guys. Up to our knees, but that doesn't satisfy really. Up to the waist, yeah, but that's a little bit safe still. Got to let go of the bank and get into the flood river where you got to swim. Isn't it interesting that, and I don't know how this works in the natural, how it starts from under the throne of God and gets deeper and wider as it goes out. Well, it's because more and more people add into the river. I think to understand what God first intended about the flood rivers of God, and what he wants for us, we need to go back to the Garden of Eden. And we need to see what God did. You need to go back to Genesis. Genesis is the book of beginnings. It's the book of, you know, the first laws of, of, of how things worked and what God did. You can all find nearly everything in the book of Genesis. And you come to the Garden of Eden and the Bible says there was one river that watered the garden. But that one became four rivers, four heads actually, but four, four floods that came out. The first one is the Pishon. And that speaks of a life of increase. You see, where the flood rivers flow, 
It gives life. Life is found by the river and because of the river and in the river. God's life is seen in so many ways, but this first flood river, the Pishon, it literally means increase. When you get near the river of God, it brings increase into your life. Brings increase into your experience where the river flows, increase flows. One translation of the word means to break loose into increase. I don't know about you, but there are so many things that want to keep you squashed from increasing because our God is a God of increase. Can I hear an amen this morning? When you get around God, you're going to increase. You will never decrease in your life if you get near God. You will never decrease. You can only increase. Because God is a God of increase. And one of the floods that comes out from the presence of God is a flood of increase. A river of increase. I want to prophesy, get near City Gate Church and you're going to increase in Jesus' name. If the river is flowing through the church, and I declare it in Jesus' name, there is a river that makes glad City Gate one of the churches of God. River of increase. The life of increase comes from the river of increase. The person of the Holy Spirit. It's very interesting that it says, in the land where this river flows is gold. (laughs) And the gold is the best gold you'll find. See, there may be gold elsewhere, but the gold from where the Pishon flows is the gold of quality. It's the abundance of Almighty God. Where the river flows, gold is mined. Where the river flows, your business will prosper. Where the river flows, abundance flows. It's the river of God. If you want to say yes, Lord, to the Pishon flowing through your life right now, why don't you stand to your feet? And we're going to quickly declare this. Come on, in Jesus' name, Father, we receive A fresh flood, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. A fresh flood of the Pishon River of life, river of increase into our lives, into our businesses, into our finances, into our life of increase. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may take your seats this morning. The second river is the Gihon River. And that word, the Gihon, means to overflow. Let's all say increase. Overflow. Overflow. Living in the overflow. It speaks of a an explosive, explosive fountain that is overflowing with life. We know from Psalm twenty three, my cup overflows. Well, my cup overflows because his river is an overflowing river. Our relationship with Jesus will cause life to overflow. That speaks to me of the life of more than enough. It means it's this isn't just about me, it's about others. If something's overflowing, it's so that it impacts other people's lives. It impacts other people's businesses. It impacts other people's marriages. It impacts other kids. It impacts other, other, other houses in our area. The overflowing Gihon flood of the Holy Ghost from our lives cannot be contained. It's not just, oh, thank you for my healing. It's my healing onto other people's lives. It's not just, thank you, God, for providing my needs. It's overflowing to provide other people's needs. It's the overflowing life of the Holy Ghost. You see, so often, just being blunt, bad theology 
has caused the church to pray for God to simply touch other people's lives. When God says, when I touch you with the Gihon River, you're going to overflow into their lives. You're going to overflow into your community. You're gonna, don't just pray for them. Let the overflow happen. Let the flood happen. When you pray, let the overflow. Let somebody else catch your spirit of prayer. When you stand by faith, let that faith overflow into the lives of other people so they catch your spirit of faith when you're rejoicing in the Lord and there's a joy that's overflowing and it's coming out let it come out and touch other people's lives and let the flow overflow into the lives of other people if you want the overflow in your life if you want the Gihon River to flood you again so that the people around you know that where you've been, God's been. Because there's an overflow from your life. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We're going to believe and we're going to receive today for a flood. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. God, that our lives would overflow into our community, overflow into our relationships, overflow into other businesses. God, we believe and we receive the Gihon flood of your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Let's take our seats this morning. What's the fourth river? The fourth river is the Tigris. Third. The third river is the Tigris, life in the fast lane. Everybody say increase. Everybody say overflow. Say life in the fast lane. Okay. What does the word mean? The Tigris means rapid, fast flowing. Rapid. Have you ever been in such a strong current that you step in and you're knocked off your feet? I have many times. Perhaps you're standing in the sea, and you know when you stand there on the sand and your feet sink. It's great, isn't it? Nice feeling. I love that feeling. Just a and it all and you sink. But then the wave comes in and you go bang, or you're knocked off your feet. The currents of God cannot be resisted. It's a fast-flowing river. Now, I know that the Lord is my shepherd and he leads me by the still, quiet waters. I know he does that. But I'm not camping there. That's when he's restoring my soul. Hello? Well, get over the restoration and get into the fast lane. Some people just want to sit by the quiet waters and smoke a pipe. Hello. And watch Netflix. And scroll Facebook for six hours while they're, but God's just, I'm just, the quiet waters. Well, if you need them, have them. And I've had them so many times where I've just needed to sit down with God and be refreshed and be restored where the knife goes in or where the, the, you know, the fiery darts come and I didn't have my shield up and one got me. Or where I believe the things I see over the things I can't see and you get into a tailspin in some stuff and then you've got to restore, you've got to restore, you've got to get your emotions back, you've got to get your mind straight, you've got to get your will in line, you've got to get your flesh down and your spirit strong. I get all of that. But when you do it, leave the quiet waters and get in the fast lane. What does the fast lane speak of to me? It speaks of vision. Having a purpose and a passion. When you've got a purpose and a passion, you don't sit down by a quiet water. You get up and you run with that vision. And you run and you charge ahead and you, and you take ground and you gain ground. Christian life is not passive, apathetic, lethargic. It's a powerful flow that is unstoppable. It's a powerful vision that burns in the heart of the believer. It's excitement. Yeah. It's thrilling. Yeah. It's excitement. It's, it's 
gets your adrenaline going. How can I sit in a song and I know we didn't have most of the band and whatever else was going on and it was all a mess. And I was, I just, I missed my favorite song. I missed my favorite song. So in the second service, I am going to explode. But I'm dancing in your rain is not a sitting by quiet, still waters, smoking my pipe sort of a song. It's where my arms have got to be active. I don't know how else to say this. Guys, your arms are on your shoulders for one reason. To wave them about and to lift them to Jesus. And until you get that, until you get a praise breakthrough, you will never get a financial breakthrough or a miracle breakthrough because God lives in praise and praise is what brings miracles. It's quite simple. And this is not a rebuke. This is a, come on, there's a tigress flood. There's a flood which will make glad the city of God. It will cause there to be zeal, excitement out of the boring mundane of life and to get into the river where you must swim. Miracles are exciting. Anointing is adventurous. What's God going to do today? Wow. What's he going to do today? What's he going to do? Does he want to heal somebody through my life? Does he want to give somebody a prophetic word? Does he want to baptize somebody in the Holy Ghost just because my shadow goes past them? Does he want, what does God want to do? You see, you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have a calling to be Jesus in the world. That is an exciting life. Who's going to get saved today? What conversation am I going to have today? I mean, I have so many conversations with people. Just in the, I was just up the road in, in, a restaurant the other day, I won't advertise. Um, and this, this happens so often, I'll either pay for someone's meal and uh, don't tell them, but it's fun. It's exciting. Who can I bless? Look around the restaurant, look for somebody that, you know, the God, don't judge. Where are the poor ones? No, come on, guys, get your mind off of the carnal, stinking, poverty way of thinking. It may be that there's someone just about to commit suicide or just about to divorce his wife or husband and you just step, I don't care if they got a suit and tie on or whatever, but God wants to encourage. Don't look with natural eyes, look with the Spirit and say, okay, God, who do you want to bless today? Who do you want to bless? And then just... You just call the waitress over and just say, hey, don't say anything, but there's 50 quid towards that person's bill. Don't tell them, please. Sometimes they do. And it's like, that's really embarrassing then. (laughs) Restaurant the other day and up comes the waiter. It doesn't take five seconds when they say, you know, they've often got an accent, which is Great, what a great conversation. Where are you from? So and so. How long have you been here? Oh, two years, three years, five years, six months, whatever. Oh, do you live in the area? Yeah, great. Have you found a church? Have you found a church? Honest, I mean, don't be embarrassed. Everybody moving into our area should find City Gate Church. Everybody, and if it's not here, find another one. Have you found a church yet? Oh, I don't know. Where's, oh, well, it's a great church down on the roundabout. So you go, oh, where is it? Write it down. There's the address. There's the website. See you Sunday. These things are exciting, man. Hi, I'm Julian, and I'm stirred up. <laughs> Come with me, Leonard. We're going to go and stir some people up. Shake some hands and tell them you're stirred up. Hey, I'm stirred up. I'm stirred up with the Gihon River, with the Tigris River. I'm stirred up. I'm stirred up. It's good, isn't it? Awesome. Who would want to live without the Tigris River life in the fast lane? If you want some excitement, zeal from the Spirit of God, stand to your feet this morning. We are going to believe God for the Tigris to flow through and bring excitement and zeal from the life of God back into your Christian living. Come on, let's, Father God, right now, we declare, flood us with the fast-flowing river of your vision. Life in the fast lane with Jesus. Flooding out the joy and the life and the, and the zeal for our God, running with a vision. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, 
Amen. You may take your seats this morning. What's the fifth one this morning? Ah, you see. Just joshing. Everybody say, the life of increase. The life of overflow. Life in the fast lane. The fourth one is the Euphrates, which speaks of bearing great fruit. The word means fruitfulness. Where the river goes, there will be gold. Where the river goes, there will be overflow. Where the river goes, there will be excitement, zeal, and vision, and stirred up, and fire, and praise, and worship, exploding, and overflowing the gospel into other people's lives. But where you find the floods of God go, you'll find the Euphrates. You'll find your life bearing fruit. Great fruit that remains. This is the place of hundredfold living. Man alive, I refuse to live in the 30-fold. Oh, but Pastor Jay, that's good seed into good ground. It's still your choice. Do you want the 30? Anybody want the 30-fold? Anybody want the 60-fold? Anybody want the 100-fold? Every hand should be in the air right now. Hundredfold living. Ah, oh, but Pastor Jane, that's up to God, you know. Sometimes 30 fold, sometimes 60, sometimes 100. No, read the next verse. And that whole next passage, the Lord Jesus says, Let me tell you how to get the hundredfold. Let me tell you how to do it. Put the word of God on the lampstand and flood your whole house with the word of God, and you'll get the hundredfold. For to him who has understanding, more harvest will be given. That's what he teaches. He who has the light, more harvest is going to be given. If I want the hundredfold, I can have it. As long as I'm putting the word of God on the lampstand of my life to flood the whole house. Not just flood my lounge, flood every part of my life. Not just flood an hour in the morning, flood 24 hours a day. Not just flood on a Sunday morning, but flood me when I'm in the office. When I'm at work, when I'm at school, when I'm with the family, when I'm away on holiday, let the Word of God flood every part of my life. Hundredfold living, bearing great fruit in Jesus' name, reaping a harvest of souls. If I was to turn to 15th chapter of John, where it talks about the tree and the vine and the the branches and the vine, You know what it says bearing great fruit is all about? Answered prayer. Answered prayer. You'll bear much fruit that remains. Why? Because you ask anything in his name according to his will. And the answer is yes, amen. Great fruit is great prayer. And great results from great prayer. There is something going on in prayer in Citygate Church right now. We emailed out this morning and you would have seen. We're asking for testimonies of prayer from that dream wall. There are 600 cards over there. I want to hear the prayer results. I want to hear the, I want to hear the testimonies. I want to hear I was believing God for a job and I got the job. I want to hear I was believing God for the house and we moved in back in May or whatever it is. So it, read the email and please reply. Just read it and reply. Bang. Don't say I'll reply next week. Just click on it and reply. Because we want to give glory to God. Amen? Amen. Bearing great fruit. A life filled with answers to prayer in the name of Jesus. Everybody say the life of increase. The life of overflow. Life in the fast lane. Bearing great fruit. Bearing great fruit comes from praying great prayers. If you want great answers to prayer in your life and therefore bearing great fruit and the river of the Euphrates flooding your life, come on, let's stand to our feet this morning and we are going to lay hold of the Euphrates. Come on, in Jesus' name. Come on, release your faith right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we believe and we receive from the rivers of life flowing from your throne. Lord, in this area of great prayer, great answers to prayer, prayer and great fruit in our lives in Jesus mighty name and everybody said amen you may take your seats this morning as we close thank you Joyce 
Where are these rivers now? Well, now we pray they're flowing through us. But let's just close this as a proper teach, shall we? Do we go to Eden? Do we go to Iraq where Eden was? Do we go and have to find those four heads of where they are now and it's very clear where they are and all of that? Is that what we need to do? No. Where is the river now? The river is flowing out of Jesus. That's where the river is. That's point number one for those at the back. Thank you. The river is flowing out of Jesus. It's where the river is. The river flows from Jesus. John 4, Jesus said, Come. If you drink of me, he said to the woman at the well, if you drink of me, I will give you waters. I will give you as much as I love this church. We're not giving you any water. It's coming from Jesus. It's Jesus Christ, the source of the river. He said in John 7, come to me and drink. How do we drink? I, you know, I, a lot happened when I used to go to the Ukraine a lot with Pastor Rob Smiley. He's up for academy in a couple of weeks' time for two weeks doing life in the Spirit. I mean, I don't know anybody like Rob Smiley personally who flows in the life of the Spirit like Pastor Rob does. And he would talk about you've got to take the top off the can at the top off of the bottle got to take the top off and I know that's to let out what's in but it was a whole thing going on but basically if you want to receive from God you got to have something to fill you got to have something to fill some people emotions are so tight nothing can get poured in will is so squashed and stubborn and prideful God can't do anything with it till you surrender mind so full of the world that there's no room for the thoughts of God he said come to me and drink we drink in worship it's great that we have people who lead worship here and they lead so brilliantly well and they encourage us as I do and others do come on let's lift our hands come on let's sing in the spirit and whatever else but I don't need to be told I don't need to be told to say I love you, Jesus. That's like me going home and reading a manual that says I need to tell my wife every day that I love her. So I open the book. I love you, Sharon. Nice hair. I won't read the rest of it. That's for us in in private. I don't need a book because I've got a relationship. Drink in praying in tongues. Oh, 30 seconds dry up, time to get a flood. And I can only say two words. Well, that's fine. Just keep saying them and you'll get some more. Drink in worship. Drink by praying in tongues. Drink from God's word. Drink in God's presence. See, if we don't drink from Him, we'll drink from another fountain. And that fountain will never quench your thirst. You'll be thirsty again tomorrow. And the more you drink from that, the more addicted to that that you become. So you stop drinking from the presence of God and you're just drinking from that other apology of a fountain. But if we drink from him, Jesus said this, you will never thirst again. Don't misunderstand that. It doesn't say you'll never drink again. 
says you'll never thirst again. You see, I get it that there's a sense, and I actually say here, come on, let's be thirsty for God. But I don't drink from God because I'm parched. I drink from Him because I love His river. I love His river. I love the presence of His Spirit. I love the presence of joy and peace and patience. See, the Spirit of God does something very physical. So, oh, I've got the joy deep down on the inside. Well, yeah, I know because you're saved, but about time came out. Drink. Drink. Oh, but Pastor Jay, that's saying drink so you're taking in more of God. Yeah, absolutely. We drink in of the river of increase. We drink in the river of the overflow. We drink in the river of adventure and vision. We drink in the river river of, of being fruitful. But in that same passage when Jesus said, come to me and drink, he didn't stop there. He said, come to me and drink and out of your belly will flood the river that you're drinking of. See, we're not just a deep well that gets filled. We're a spring of waters. When God becomes a river in us, we become the river for our world. And the increase that we have can flow out. And the overflow that we have flows out. And the vision and dream and exhilarating, exciting, purpose-filled Christian life flows out. And the fruitfulness that we are bearing fruit flows out of our lives into the other people. You see, 1 Corinthians tells us that Jesus, <laughs> the second man, the last Adam, became a life-giving spirit. A life giver. And where He gives life, we become life. We don't just receive life, we become life. When we drink from Jesus, the river becomes a well in us so others can be blessed by the increase, the overflow, the vision, the fruitfulness. And others can come and drink from our fountain. Come and drink from you and I. You and I can be the flood in the desert the pools on the dry ground. People come in to drink from your life. And we're the first to say, it's the river of Jesus. But they can drink from, you see, this is why the river gets deeper and wider. Comes from Jesus, floods into you and I. We flood out, bigger river. Other people drink, bigger river. And the world can know that there is a river that makes glad the city of God. Let's all stand to our feet this morning, shall we? The river of the Spirit. Flood our lives, God, that we may flood other people. Perhaps there are people here and you absolutely feel like a dry creek bank. Well, part of that can be you need to deal with how much you believe your feelings. You're believing, you're, if you believe your feelings, you need to put that believing into what the Word of God says about you, not into what you feel. You need to put your faith into what God says you are, not by what your feelings tell you you feel that's the first thing but the second thing is you can come and drink perhaps you've not had a drink for a long time dry as a bone in the desert parched whatever perhaps you're here today and you've never come to the life of Jesus and say Jesus will you be my Lord and Saviour will you come and fill my life (coughs) excuse me you see 
The Christian life is not a religion. It's not a tradition. It's not a Sunday service. It's a life in the river. What river are you drinking from? You're drinking from the river of fashion? Are you drinking from the Facebook river? The TikTok river? Are you drinking from the adultery river? Are you drinking from the drug river? Are you drinking from the porn river? Are you drinking from the unforgiveness river? Are you drinking from the gambling river? Are you drinking from the depression river? Are you drinking from the gender dysphoria river? Where are you drinking? Because there's a river coming from Jesus this morning with every eye closed and every head bowed if you need to respond to this today and either say yeah Jesus will you be my Lord and Saviour I want, I want you to come into my life I want to be a Christian or perhaps you're here today and you say you know what I'm drinking more from another river than I am the river of God so perhaps you need to receive Jesus for the first time or you need to come back to him if that's you today just with every eye closed every head bowed be bold come on this is about life change we're not timid here This is a decision for your eternity. If you're here today and say, Jesus, come into my life. I want want to be a Christian. I want to live for God. I want to be a Christian. I want to know eternal life. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand right now in this auditorium and online. Even if you're on your own online, come on, lift your hand. Are you here today? You're going to say, yeah, Jesus, come into my life. Come on, as I just look around, I need to see your hands. Where are you today? Come into my life, Jesus. I want to give my life to God. I want to drink from the river of God. Is there anybody here in this service? Come on, in Jesus' name and online as well. Let's all pray this prayer together. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life by the help of your grace, your power. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, for doing a work in our lives that's irreversible. That even in the middle of the mountain shaking and the nations raging and the confusion and the mess, we can be still and know why, because we're drinking of the river and becoming the river in our generation. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we give God some praise today? Well, thank you for joining us today. We hope that this message has encouraged you and built your faith. Remember to subscribe to our channel and you can join us live every Sunday for our Sunday services. See you next time.